What's up guys, my name is Luke and welcome back to Motion and Design. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how I made these Nike style frames. So I did three of them, we're only going to be doing one of them, but the other two will be up on my Patreon if you guys are interested. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a pretty simple process, but a pretty fun one. I haven't seen anyone really do this on uh, on YouTube, so hopefully uh, this is something new. Hopefully you guys like this type of content. Uh, yeah, it's pretty simple. It's mainly going to be a lighting tutorial, just to show you how I go about doing the lighting. But it's also pretty fun, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. If you do like this type of content, please consider liking and subscribing. And if you're interested in the project files uh, of this and a bunch of other tutorials, my Patreon is in the bio. Uh, so yeah, let's get started. I'm going to be using an Aquad Polycam. It is a really cool app. You get uh, three free scans, so if you don't want to pay for it, uh, you do get three free, but I would highly recommend paying for it as it does uh, make some really good high quality scans. So I had my shoe set up on a tripod with a toilet paper roll. This is just so we can get the images from all around the shoe and also some of the bottom. Uh, yeah, you'll notice that I'm doing it indoors. Uh, this is just for test purposes and just to demonstrate how to do it. Uh, don't do what I'm doing, you will get a awful result. Make sure that you are either recording uh, in a neutral lighting. Uh, I'd highly recommend doing it on an overcast day. I got the best results from doing this on an overcast day, but today is nice and sunny, so that can really work for me. Uh, yeah, just go and take a bunch of pictures around the phone. It has an automatic uh, option where it will take pictures as you move. Uh, I find that that gives the best results. Just take a bunch of pictures all around the phone from every single angle, and then you should be able to get a good result. So after you're done scanning it, email it to yourself. Um, I emailed it to myself as an FBX. And now we have this. We have our FBX with our textures over here that are UV wrapped. So let's bring that into Cinema 4D. So it's gonna come in tiny. That's okay. Let's just make this 100 by 100. Actually fine. Let's just use our person. And that's a little bit bigger than real life, but it's okay. So today's tutorial, I'm going to be doing it in Redshift. Uh, yeah, I had, a bun I had a poll and a lot of you guys were asking for Redshift tutorials. So I thought I would start learning Redshift. So yeah, this tutorial is going to be on Redshift, although it's very easy to follow along with Octane. Uh, most of the nodes are exactly the same. Uh, yeah, so yeah, let's get into it. Um, the nice thing about using Redshift is that when you bring in the texture, it will come in as a redshift texture, so we don't need to do anything. But if you're using Octane, just bring in the two textures, um, the diffuse, and if you want a little bit more detail, the other one that we got over here, you can use this as a bump map. But yeah, we have this for now. Let's just get rid of this at the bottom. So let's go into point mode and just select all of these. I might actually find. Uh, if you guys want the bottom of the shoe, I'd recommend doing two scans, one at the top and one at the bottom, and then just kind of putting them together in post. Uh, I don't, I couldn't figure out a good way of doing this. So yeah, if any of you guys know a good way of photo scanning this, where you're able to get the top and the bottom to like eat, like nicely line up, please let us know in the comments. We cool. Now that we have our shoe over here, let's just put the axis in the center. And let's open up Redshift. So one thing to keep in mind when scanning, any shadows that are scanned in will be baked into it. So you'll notice over here that we have some shadows, which isn't ideal. So I think if I had to do this again, I would do it more in the studio lighting where I'd set up myself or just choose a better place to scan. I, I was doing it on overcast day, but there were certain shadows like this that came through. But other than that, I mean, the model is really high detailed. It looks really nice um, and will work perfectly for what we're trying to do. Cool. So let's grab a camera over here. I'm going to set it to 80 moles. So like that. And let's also change our aspect ratio to a square. This is kind of, uh, actually before we position that, let's go in and draw out a frame for our X particles. 
So this doesn't have to be perfect. This can just be a rough outline. We're just gonna be using this to emit some trails from, but you're not actually gonna see the base of it. So it's okay if it is not a perfect uh, spline. Something like that should be fine. Let's just set it up that it actually fits the shoe. Cool, and let's just group these together. Cool, and with our null, let's just angle this a little bit. So I'm thinking something like that should look quite nice. I kind of wanted it that it just adds some movement with the XP trails. Uh, so it kind of seems like the shoe is kind of flying off or if you're like stepping on something. I don't know, I've just added some nice movement to the frame. Cool, so let's go in and add a plane. This is just going to be our backdrop over here. And let's move that further back. Something like that. And let's start working on our scene. So let's first off start by adding a material. Let's go in and add a rum. Plug that into our cutter. And let's also just turn up our roughness all the way. And I'm going to use this nice green copy here. Uh, you guys can obviously use whatever color you want, but I thought this green looked pretty nice. Something like that. Let's just bring up our max a little bit. So like that. I think that looks quite nice. Awesome. So let's start lighting this. Let's go in and first add a heat. Okay, we can add an area light now. Let's also add an dome light and bring down the intensity all the way to zero. So we have a black scene over here. And let's make this light quite small. So 20 by 20. And we're just going to set up kind of like a three point lighting. Something like that just highlights the rim of the shoe up there. Let's add another one. It's just going to highlight the top of the shoe. I think that is perfect. Uh, let's just make a little bit longer so we can catch the front over here. I think that is fine for now. And then let's add in our key lights. So let's add another area lights, 2020. And let's add a target onto it. And then set the shoe as our target. Cool. Let's go over here and set the spray to something really small. Because we only wanted to kind of highlight our little Nike logo over there. I think some like that should work for now. Let's also just add a light for the background. It's going to light up our uh, paint up here. So you can either light it the way that I'm lighting it right now, or you can just add it as an emission texture or something really low. Uh, it's literally just so that we can actually have this shown in the background. So uh -huh. let me see how this looks in the emission. I like that a little bit more instead of just adding a light because then we have a little bit more control over it. Cool. Now let's do our XP system. So with our spline, let's add it onto an extrude and let's set that to like 0.5. Then let's add in our XP system over here, change the emitter to object and set the extrude as our object. So if we had to create play now, they're going to shoot in all the different directions. That's not what we want. Let's change the normal to minus Y. So now it will only shoot downwards. Also, let's also change emit from uh, polygon center to polygon area so we get a nice even distribution. Let's go over here into our mission and change this to shots. Awesome. Let's go add, actually before we do that, let's go and let's add in some gradient for random. So now you just delete these. I'm gonna use the same color over here. 
but we'll also add in some dark colors so we have a kind of variety of different colors. Cool. And then in our generators, let's add in a XP trail. So this XP system is really not complicated, it's super simple, but for what I was trying to achieve, that's all I needed. I mean, you can obviously add turbulence and a bunch of other things to it if you uh, want, but for the sake of this video, I thought something like this looks perfect. I think 1000 should be fine. I just kind of wanted that it's flowing off to the side. Cool, so the one really nice thing about Redshift in comparison to Octane is the amount of control that you have of particles. So the nice thing is that we're actually able to use our emitter color as our trail color. That was something I just could not figure out in Octane. There is ways to do it, but it's like long ways to go around to get that result. So let's go over here and add in a Redshift render tag. And let's change this to capsules. Let's make it like 0.5, something like that, works quite thin. And let's add in a rich material node. Add this over here. And we're gonna look for a vertex attribute. Let's plug that into the color. And we're just gonna select this curves color we have. And now we'll get a variety of colors. Let's add maybe a few more particles. Let's maybe make this 2000. Cool. And now let's just work on the lights a little bit more. Let's maybe bring up our shape a little bit so it's not as uh, sharp. And let's angle it a little bit. I think something like that looks quite nice. Uh, let's also add some colors to our backlights over here. It does look nice as white, but I think because we have this nice green background, let's add some variations to the color over here. Take some like that, and let's do the same for this light. So it's a little bit dark over here. Let's just add in the full light. Let's go red shift lights, area lights. Make this 20, 20. And we're gonna set this to something really low. So this is mainly so that we don't lose all the detail in the shoe. I mean, if you want to, you obviously can, but I think I just wanted that we can still kind of see the shoe over here. And I might want to add just one other full light on the side over here so that this back gets a little bit more light, just so we can actually see the tick over here. And yeah, look at that. Really simple, really easy. And now you have this really cool style frame. Uh, I'll just take this into Photoshop and just kind of add a white border around it. But yeah, that is the gist of it. You can obviously add some more lighting. I mean, we could add uh, just a little bit more light to our uh, trails over here, so they're not as dark. Awesome, and look at that, we get a really nice render. Really simple, uh, yeah, not the most crazy uh, tutorial, but I thought it was pretty cool, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, but yeah, exciting news, I got The Last of Us done. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna have The Last of Us intro remake, I think next week, Wednesday. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. And yeah, if you enjoy this type of content, please consider subscribing and liking. I make tutorials every week. Uh, yeah, and if you're interested in the project file and the other two project files, it is in the link in the bio. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you have a great day. Peace.